So at this point, the mosaic filter is affecting the entire clip. What we'd really like to do is just have that mosaic filter over the talent's face. So to do that, I am going to move this clip up to V3 in the timeline, leaving an empty space, leaving an empty V2 in there. And in V2, we're going to put a generated oval, which is going to become our travel map. So let's talk more about that. First things first, let's actually create this travel map. Let's create this oval. To do that, go up in the viewer, and at the bottom right-hand corner of the viewer window, there is a little button that looks like a film cell with the letter A inside of it. If you click on that, you will get a whole bunch of different uh, generators. And if we go in here, we just want the shapes generator, and we want an oval. So we select oval, and we get ha, an oval. Go figure. So this oval is going to be the face. That's going to be the shape that defines where the mosaic is going to appear over the top of the talent. There's something kind of cool here. Um, if you tear away this video tab, so just click on the video tab and drag it away. Now we can see the viewer's video tab while we have also access to the controls tab of the viewer at the same time. So I'm going to adjust the aspect ratio of this because human faces are usually a little taller than they are wider. So I'm going to make it like that. And if we just kind of compare that a little bit with the canvas, we can see that that's maybe a little too large. So I'll also make this oval a little smaller to match the size of the head of my talent. Okay, so far so good. So now I'm going to close this little tearaway window that we tore away. I'm just going to use its close box to close it. The video tab goes right back to the viewer and it's just like it was before we tore it out. I'm going to drag this oval onto the timeline and do an overwrite edit into V2. So I want this oval between my video on V1 and my mosaic video on V2. And then I'm just going to drag it out to make it the same length. Okay, and as we scrub around with the playhead, no change yet, right? So far, we're still just seeing the mosaic one. Here's where the magic comes in. Here's where we turn this normal black and white oval into a travel mat. And we're going to do that by using a uh, clip composite mode. You can access those by aiming at the clip up on V3, holding down the control key on the keyboard, and clicking on that clip. You can also right click. I find control is more reliable because some people don't have the right click function turned on on their mouse, which is in system preferences. So once we get that little menu up, we go down towards the bottom of that menu to the composite mode submenu. And inside there, we navigate down and we choose Travel Mat Luma. Now why do we choose Travel Mat Luma instead of Travel Mat Alpha? Because Luma is the brightness information. So what we're saying is, use the brightness information of the track directly beneath this track to define what portion of the image on this track will be visible. If that didn't make sense, don't sweat it, we're going to see it right now. So we select Travel Mat Luma, and suddenly, if you look over in the canvas, we've got part of the video is mosaic and the rest of it isn't. So we can clearly see the chair and the shades, we can even see the shirt, and we can see half of my face, but not the other half. Okay, so we've done our little magic trick. We turned that oval into a travel mat that tells Final Cut what portion of the mosaic should be composited over the top of the regular video. Now we just need to move that oval around to get it to sit directly over my face. To do that, all we have to do is select the oval clip in the timeline, and then go up to the canvas window, and make sure that in the canvas window, you're set to image plus wireframe viewing mode. So up at the top of the canvas window, this little button that's a square with the interrupted sides, if you click on that, 
make sure image plus wireframe has a check mark next to it. As long as it does, what you should see in the canvas is a, sort of a big crosshairs, big X, with the number 2 in the middle. That means we're dealing with the clip that's on V2. And then all you have to do is drag it around, and as you do that, watch the mosaic move along with that track. So I can sort of position this directly over my face. And look at that. Suddenly, I am anonymous. OK. So in this particular clip, I didn't move around a heck of a lot, but I did a little. So what we can do here is we can set keyframes at different times to move that oval around. So we're just basically moving the oval, which also moves the mosaic area. So I'm just going to pick a moment in time here. Well, let's pick the very beginning. Why not? So there's the very beginning. So I go over to the canvas and make sure that my mosaic is in the right place, just where I want it to be. And then, in the canvas, I hit this little Add Motion Keyframe button. It's the little diamond down there. So when you click that diamond, notice the crosshairs. As soon as you click that diamond, the crosshairs turns green. That's Final Cut's way of indicating to you that there is a keyframe at this moment in time. So to put in more keyframes, we just move the playhead ahead in time, find a different moment, and go back over to the canvas and just drag that around a little bit. And if you drag it a lot, you can see there's a line that moves from its original position to its new position. For this one, we're probably not moving it very much. It all depends on how much your talent is moving. Okay, I'll move ahead to another point in time. You can be really exhaustive and go frame by frame with this, but I find that you don't have to. You can be kind of general and just move ahead a few seconds at a time and move the thing into the right place. Add a little bit more. Come down a bit and just keep doing that. The more your source moves, the more careful you'll have to be. Okay, and when you get to the end, you're done. We will almost certainly have to render this thing in order to see it play back properly. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to render this whole thing. And you'll see that I have kind of an old computer, so I'll be fast forwarding this. We'll be turning 7 minutes into 15 seconds. I'm in desperate need of one of those new quad-core MacBook Pros that they just introduced today. Uh, so if anybody wanted to, you know, send me a check or something like that, just feel free to email me, friendlymactrainer at gmail.com, and I'm sure we can work something out. Okay, so the rendering is done at long last. So let's take a look at this. Yeah. The governor hired me to go out and find some troublemakers to bring into the crowd. He wanted the protest to turn ugly so he could have an excuse to bring in the cops, roust everybody up, throw some people in jail, bust some heads. So there's our anonymized footage. Uh, along the way, we covered uh, linked selections, generators, clip composite modes, travel mats, uh, and even third-party plugins. Um, just to do this one simple little technique, but once you've done it a couple times, it moves really fast, and you can apply this to all kinds of other things, too. Um, using travel mats opens up a whole new world of possibilities for color correction, including like you know high dynamic range videos, things like that. Um, we'll talk more about those in future tutorials. Feel free to drop me an email at friendlymactrainer at gmail.com or visit my website, nathanfullerton.com. Uh, I am available for private lessons or group lessons. Please feel free to hire me. Daddy needs a new laptop.